Hello everyone, welcome to our CSC 702 presentation. We are going to give a review on the paper BERT pretending of deep bidirectional transformers for language understanding. Here is our group members. I am going to talk about the introduction part. Language model pretending has been shown to be effective for improving many natural language processing tasks. These include sentence level tasks such as natural language inference and paraphrasing, which aims to predict the relationship between sentences by analyzing them holistically, as well as token level tasks such as named entity recognition and question answering, where models are required to produce fine-grained output at the token level. There are two existing strategies for applying pretend language representation, feature-based and fine-tuning. The feature-based approaches uses task-specific architecture that include the pretend representation as original features. The fine-tuning approach, such as the generative pretrain transformer, introduces minimal task-specific parameters and is trained on the downstream task by simply fine-tuning all pretrain parameters. The two approaches share the same objective function during pretraining, where they use undirectional language models to learn general language representations. In this paper, they improve the fine-tuning-based approaches by proposing BERT but means bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. Transformers are faster as words can be processed simultaneously and context of words can be better learned as they can learn context from both directions simultaneously. BERT elevates the previously mentioned undirectionality constraint by using a masked language model MLM pretraining objective. The masked language model randomly masks some of the tokens from the input and the objective is to predict the original vocabulary ID of the masked word based only on its context. So the objective. The contributions of the paper are as follows. They demonstrate the importance of bidirectional pretraining for language representations unlike Redford et al which uses undirectional language models for pre-training but uses masked language models to enable pre-trained deep bidirectional representations. They show that pre-trained representations reduce the need for many heavily engineered task-specific architectures. BERT is the first fine-tuning based representation model that achieved a state-of-the-art performance on a large suite of sentence level and token level tasks, outforming many task-specific architectures. BERT advances the state-of-the-art of 11 NLP tasks. Now I'm going to talk about the related world. So there is a long history of pre-training general language representations like unsupervised feature-based approach, it means learning features from unlevel data. The goal of unsupervised feature learning is often to discover low dimensional features that capture some structural underlying the high dimensional input data. According to Turian, the pretend word embeddings are an integral part of modern NLP system, offering significant improvement over embedding learned from sketch. Uh, so, the proposed ELMO, e -L -M -O, embeddings from language models and its predecessors generalized traditional word embedding research along a different dimension. They extract the context sensitive features from left to right and right to left language model. It uses two LSTM, just like one goes to left to right and the other goes to right to left. It takes the input sequence one by one and in each sequence it creates and hidden stage and the hidden stage is produced by the result of previous hidden stage and the current token. The contextual representation of each token is the concatenation of the left to right and the right to left representation. This is not purely bidirectional but it follows left to right and right to left approach. They have also mentioned about unsupervised fine tuning approach. According to Colbert and Weston, as with the feature based approaches, the first works in this direction only pretend word embedding parameters from unleveled text. Open AI GPT generative pretend transformer is an unsupervised transformer language model which uses left to right transformer. Here you can see that E1, E2, EN, these are the inputs and TRM, TRM, TN, these are the attentions. And the attention takes information from the left tokens. So it's basically 
takes input as left to right which means whenever you try to interpret a token you need to use the left information the model is basically forced to make sense of what the thing only from left this is a basic limitation of a unsupervised fine tuning approach because it only uses the information of its left part and sometimes it may be wrong so there they have talked about transfer learning from supervised data so for example humans have an inherent ability to transfer knowledge across tasks what we acquire as knowledge while learning about one task we utilize it in the same way to solve the related task. The more related the task is, the easier it is for us to transfer or cross-utilize our knowledge. Conventional machine learning and deep learning algorithms so far have been traditionally designed to work in isolation. These algorithms are trained to solve a specific task. The models have to be rebuilt from scratch once the feature space distribution changes. Transfer learning is the idea of overcoming this isolated learning paradigm and utilizing knowledge acquired for the one task to solve related ones. There has also been work showing effective transfer from supervised tasks with large data set such as natural language inference and machine transformation. Natural language processing is a powerful tool but in real world we often come across tasks which suffer from data deficit and poor model generalization. Transfer learning solved the problem by allowing us to take a pretend model of a task and use it for others. Just like here, it learned from this task and used this knowledge to task 2. This is basically the context of transfer learning. The rest will be talked by my other teammates. Thank you. Hello, I'm Arnisha. I'm going to be introducing BERT and its implementation in this part of the presentation. The framework for BART uses two steps, pre-training on unlabeled text corpus and fine-tuning on specific task. Now each of these steps have two major tasks. Let's us first look at the tasks for pre-training and then we'll look at the tasks for fine-tuning. The first task in pre-training is maxed language modeling. Traditional left-to-right -right or right-to-left models aren't employed in BERT for pre-training. In order to train a deep bidirectional representation, the authors masked some percentage of input tokens at random and then predicted those max tokens. Now, BERT uses a relatively simple approach for this. 15% of the input words are maxed and then the entire sequence is run through a deep bidirectional transformer encoder. Afterwards, only the maxed words are predicted. For example, if the input is the man went to the mask 1 to buy a mask 2 of milk, then the labels for mask 1 and mask 2 are store and gallon respectively. Although this allows obtaining a bidirectional pre-trained model, a downside to this is that it creates a mismatch between the pre-training and fine-tuning since the mask tokens does not appear during fine-tuning. To mitigate this, the maxed words are not always replaced with the actual mask token. The training data generator chooses 15% of token positions at random for prediction. If the ith token is chosen, it is replaced with the mask 80% of the time, a random token 10% of the time, and an unchanged token 10% of the time. For example, assuming the unlabeled sentence is my dog is hairy and during the random masking procedure, the fourth token is chosen, which corresponds to hairy. The masking procedure will be as follows. 80% of the time, the word will be replaced with the mask token. So my dog is hairy will be replaced with my dog is mask. 10% of the time, the word will be replaced with a random word. So it could be my dog is apple. 10% of the time, the word will be unchanged. So my dog is hairy will produce my dog is hairy. The second task in pre-training is next sentence prediction. Many important downstream tasks such as question answering, 
natural language inference are based on understanding the relationship between two sentences, which is not directly captured by language modeling. In order to learn the relationship between two sentences, the authors also trained on a simple task which can be generated from any monolingual corpus. Given two sentences A and B, is B the actual next sentence that comes after A, or just a random sentence from the corpus? For example, if sentence A is the man went to the store and sentence B is he bought a gallon of milk, then the label is is next sentence because they are related. And if sentence A is the man went to the store and sentence B is penguins are flightless, the label is not next sentence because these two are not related. The input representation in BART is able to unambiguously represent both a single sentence and a pair of sentences in one token sequence, where a sentence can be an arbitrary span of contiguous text rather than an actual linguistic sentence. A sequence refers to the input token sequence to BART, which may be a single sentence or two sentences packed together. The first token of every sentence is always a special classification token, CLS. The final hidden state corresponding to this token is used as the aggregate sequence representation for classification tasks. Sentence pairs are packed together into a single sequence. The sentences are differentiated in two ways. First, they are separated with a special token, SCP. Second, a learned embedding to every token indicating whether it belongs to sentence A or sentence B is added. For a given token, its input representation is constructed by summing the corresponding token, segment, and position embeddings. 3000 word piece vocabulary was used for token. BERT's model architecture is a multi-layer bidirectional transformer encoder based on the original implementation described in Vaswani. The transformer encoder has a multi-headed self-attention for models context. It also contains free forward layers for computing non-linear hierarchical features. The layer norms and residuals make training deep networks healthy. The positional encoding allows model to train relative positioning. As training corpus, the authors used English Wikipedia and book corpus with batch size of approximately 130,000 words for a million steps, which is approximately 40 epochs. Adam was used as an optimizer and results were reported in two model size, BART base and BART large. Training of BERT base was performed on 4 cloud TPU and BERT large was performed on 8 cloud TPUs and the pre-training took 4 days to complete. In fine tuning, most model hyperparameters were kept the same as in pre-training with the exception of the batch size, learning rate and the number of training epochs. For each specific task, inputs and outputs were fed into BERT and all the parameters were fine-tuned end-to-end. The dropout probability was always kept at 0.1. The authors observed that the optimal hyperparameter values are task-specific. For large data sets, the sensitivity to hyperparameter choice was far less than small data sets. However, since fine-tuning is typically very fast, so it is reasonable to simply learn an exhaustive search over the parameters and choose the model that performs best in the development set. In the next part of the presentation, experimental results and analysis will be shown. Thank you, Arnish Apu. Now I will be discussing about the experiment and the results. In this paper, the authors have presented BERT fine-tuning results on 11 NLP tasks. First of all, the authors considered the general language understanding evaluation or GLU in short. It's a collection of diverse natural language understanding tasks. They have used a batch size of 32. They fine-tuned for three epochs over the data for all the glue tasks. For each of these tasks, they selected the best fine-tuning learning rate among different values on the dataset. For BERT large model, it was found that 
fine tuning was sometimes unstable on small data sets in terms of the performance of the glue bert base and bert large outperforms all systems on all tasks by a substantial margin obtaining 4.5 percent and 7 percent improvement for the largest and the most widely reported glue task called mnli bart obtains a 4.6 percent absolute accuracy improvement next they consider the stanford question answering data set or squared version 1.1 it's a collection of 100k crowdsource question answering pairs. Uh, they have fine tuned the model for three epochs with a batch size of 32 and they have used the learning rate for 5 e to the power minus 5. In terms of the performance on squad version 1.1, 1 .1, uh, BART outperforms the top leaderboard system by 1.5% if one score improvement in ensembling and 1.3 percent f1 score improvement as a single system without trivia qa fine tuning it was only lose uh, 0.1 to 0.4 percent f1 score then they also performed the experiment on squared version 2.0 and they have found that uh, 5.1 percent f1 score improvement over the previous best system Next, the authors consider the situations with adversarial generation dataset or SWAG. It contains 113k sentence pair completion examples. The task is to choose the most plausible continuation among four choices. For training, they used a batch size of 16 and fine-tuned for three epochs and a learning rate of 2 e to the power minus 5. In terms of the performance of, on SWAG, uh, BART uh, large outperforms all authors' baseline and BERT be beats the LSIM ELMO system by 27.1% improvement and OpenAI GPT by 8.3% improvement. Then the authors discuss about the effect of pre training tasks. Uh, first of all, uh, they have observed that removing NSP harsh performance significantly on different parameters. Next, the left to right model performs worse than the mask language model, uh, modeling model on all tasks. And the third uh, ish effect was that the by LSTM harsh the performance on glue task as well. Uh, then the authors discuss about the effect of the model size. Uh, increasing the hidden dimension size from 200 to 600 helps in terms of the performance. However, increasing further to 1000 did not bring further improvement. Uh, in terms of the limitation of the BERT model, uh, a BERT is a technology to generate contextualized word embedding, which is the best and biggest advantage of this model. However, it also a, it is also a biggest disadvantage as well, because it it is a very computational intensive task for the inference time. Therefore, in production at a scale, it can become costly. As claimed by the by this paper, it is not uh, good for natural language understanding inference or NLI or and the casual inference. And the third limitation is that BART has the sentence length limitation, which means that it requires fixed length sentence for training or fine tuning. However, it was resolved on a new model called ExcelNet. In conclusion, uh, BART is a state-of-the-art model at that time and it beat the other powerful models as well. Despite, the li despite its limitation, it can be used in many languages and Google is widely using BART for Google search which is the core function of this company. So uh, that's from my side. Thank you for attending this uh, presentation. If you have any question, let us know.